Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make this super cute treat bag. Um, we're going to be using some lawn font stamps and dies, and then you're just going to use your scoreboard to make the bag. If you have the lawn font uh, treat bag die, it's going to be about this size. Now this one I created with uh, the scoreboard as well, but if you have the lawn font, it's going to have that cute little uh, rigid at the top and have the little handles. But it would be about this size compared to this. But you can just make this with your with your scoreboard. So. Um, but I do plan on um, purchasing the uh, treat bag, and we will be doing videos on that later. Um, so let's go ahead and run through what we did. So I'm going to run through some of the stamps here. So we're going to use the new uh, stamp set that is Hey There by Lawn Fawn. This just came out in their release. So it's got a cute little cow and a sheep and a horse and pig and a goat and a little chicken in the house. I think it's super adorable. Now, I got these from scrapbook.com and they were on sale for $12 a piece the other day. So you just got to watch their sales. But I did notice a lot of stuff is sold out um, over there, but Lawn Fawn still has it available and so does Blitzy. I'll have those linked down below. And you also can check these out on Amazon and find them super affordable over there as well. So Blitzy, I think they're free shipping after $25, and I think they have them for like $13 or something over there. Because like I noticed, it was sold out of this die, the quilted die, and Blitzy still has it in stock, I think for like $22 or $23, something like that. So like I said, I'm going to have that link down below just in case you guys are looking for this, because I noticed everybody was kind of sold out on that. Okay, so we're going to be using that um, the quilted uh, die here, and that's what you can see right here. So this is the quilted die. I did the front and the back. And then, um, you already seen the stamp set. Um, I am using the um, Tag Your It tag set from Lawn Fun. And then I'm using the Hillside dies the, with the stitch borders from them as well. And I also, I showed you guys the other day that you can also cut these out with your silhouette. If you have a silhouette, you can use that as well. Same thing with the tags. You can always cut those out with your silhouette too, or Cricut. And then I'm using the sti stitched circles in and out uh, circle dies here um, from Lawn Fawn as well. But like I said, you can also do this with uh, your silhouette. I played around with that the other day. Or you could just do a plain circle with your um, Cricut or if you have a punch or something like that. Okay, so like I said, we're using these ones right here. And I did the uh, cute little horse and I did the smaller circle here. But this time I'm going to actually maybe come up a step and do a little bit bigger of a circle this time. So that's what we're gonna try. So, um, and then I, I doubled up that tag and you can see the cute little ribbon and stuff. We did some stitching. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna use the cute little horse here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that down. And then we're also using the um, the happy birthday sentiment here. And I cut mine in half so I could stack them on top of each other. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that horse down in here like this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. All right, let's go ahead, and I'm going to use my uh, Memento Black Ink, Tuxedo Black. And we're going to go ahead and ink that up. We're going to go ahead and get that laid down like that. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp it one more time. And as you can see, it does a really good job. But I'm going to go ahead and brighten that black up just a hair bit more. So let me go ahead and do that one more time. All right. So there we go. And then I'm gonna use my little Lawn Fawn. Um, I absolutely love this thing. This thing is amazing. Like I said, I am still going to purchase the, uh, the other one from Amazon, which is a huge thing. Cut it down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test it out for you guys to see if it works the same. So I've got him stamped up and ready to go. So let me go ahead and talk about, so what I'm gonna use is my colored pencils. So today I'm going to be using the Tombow and let's see, we're going to be using Autumn Leaf and Chestnut Brown. Okay, so those are the two colors I'm going to be using for the horse. Um, now these are the Tombow color pencils and I will say, because they are really expensive, I had saved up my points on Overstock and purchased these uh, a while back and used all my points, so I, I got them very, very cheap. But I really would not recommend them. I don't think they're that great. Okay, so... And then what I'm going to be using is mineral, uh, mineral spirits, but I purchased this from, this is a huge thing. This is 32 ounces and I got it from Walmart back in the paint section for $4.50, but just be sure to read the warnings on mineral spirits because you know it's flammable, etc. It's for uh, about $4.50, so definitely check that out. Okay, so what we're going to, this is how I do mine because 
Um, what I do is whenever I first open it, I just make a tiny little pinhole just like that, all right? So then I took one of my Tim Holtz little foam uh, things that are brand new. I put it down in a little cup like this, and then I just squirted a little bit down in here and then dipped my... Um, and then I just use my blending stick to dip it right down in here to the pad. Now, you could have used a cotton ball instead of using this, but I didn't have a cotton ball on hand. So, definitely would recommend just using a cotton ball so you don't waste one of these unless you don't mind because I'm going to use it like this forever. And then what I do is I just keep a piece of paper right over it. So, you could always use like a little Tupperware that would seal. All right. So, that's how I'm doing that. So, let me go ahead and zoom you guys in so you guys can see how I'm going to color this. Okay, so for the, I'm going to go ahead and do his body first. And the, what I do is, so you're going to go ahead, let me move my, okay. So what I do is just kind of go around in circular motions or just going back and forth. And I'm just going to kind of get some of this down all the way around the sides of his body. All right. So I'm just going to kind of go all the way around. You can do circular motions, like I said, or just kind of going in a straight line. And I'm just going to lay down some of this color all the way around the edges. So you can use, I think it's any wax-based or oil-based uh, colored pencils for this. Um, you just wouldn't want to use the water watercolor pencils for this. I haven't tried it, but I've just heard you're not supposed to. You know, it's not going to work the same. So, because um, what this does is this uh, wax, this um, mineral spirits is going to wax wax your melt is going to uh, melt your wax that's in your colored pencil and blend it out so this is how I like to color my images all right so let me go ahead and get this part going here first All right, so just like that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blending stick and then I'm just gonna be dipping it into my sponge just like that. So getting some of it on there just like that. And then you're gonna take and you're gonna start at, at some point and just grab your color and start blending it down. So you can see how that's just going to start blending your colors. And then just kind of dip back in when you need to so I just get right up there and I just love how this works out you could take some cheap um, colored pencils and get the same type of effect to, that you would with Copic um, I'm not too sure if I will in the future but at this point I don't think I'll be using Copics to color in my videos just because not everybody can afford them and I don't want to base something upon some, you know, somebody really wants it to look the same and they can't really pull that off. But if you have Copic markers, go ahead and, uh, and do that. But that's one of the reasons why I'm not doing that right now. All right, so we're just going to continue to blend this out. But look how pretty that fades off. And you could come back um, into the edges and darken those back up. And you can just keep layering as much as you want to on top of this. Now with these blending sticks, that, um, I got these from Walmart. It comes 10 in a pack. This is by uh, Dollar Rowney. I'm probably saying that wrong. But anyways, it comes 10 in a pack for like three bucks. Um, and then you just get you a piece of sandpaper to, um, to sharpen these so you can switch out colors and stuff. But what I do to switch out colors, um, I just take a scrap piece of cardstock and then I dip it back in here and I'll just roll it until it's, it, all the color kind of comes out of it. And that's what I do um, when you're just kind of in the moment coloring. All right, so I'm gonna come back in and darken these edges here just a little bit more.
I'm gonna go ahead and come back in with a pigeon gray to do his um, to do his little hooves. So just like that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and blend those out. Uh oh, there we go. It was kind of fun. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and blend out his little hooves here. Just like that. All right, so he's ready to go. Now, I did not buy the dies uh, to um, to cut this out, uh, the little die set that goes to, to get all these individually cut out. So I'm gonna fussy cut this, but I do plan on going back and uh, getting the dies for each one of these sets. I just like to go ahead and get my stamps first and then go back and the next time I'm purchasing and grab the dies, just so it makes it a little bit more affordable. So just like that. Now, once I have him all cut out, what I do is I go ahead and take a uh, black pen and go around the edges here. I'm gonna go around the edges just like this, just to kind of so you don't have just that white um, sides of the cardstock just standing out. The next thing that we're gonna do is where you're gonna get your scoreboard out. I have a Martha Stewart one, like I've said, for ages. I've had it for years and years and years. There's one by EK Success, We Are Memory Keepers. I don't think you can find this one anymore, but I will have some link down below if you don't have one. Um, use your 40% off coupon or find when they're on sale because they're pretty affordable. Um, and when you have one, you'll have it for life. They'll last you a long, long time. Okay, so I had found somebody and her name was Poodles Paper Crafts. And because I didn't have, like I said, because I was originally wanting to make this size box here because I wanted the die, but I didn't have it on hand. Um, and she had showed how to make these. So definitely check out her YouTube channel. I'm gonna have it linked down below. Poodles Paper Crafts, she makes some awesome stuff. So that's where I got this idea from. All right, and I think she made it uh, a few years ago. So definitely, she's got a lot of cool ones. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So just a regular piece of paper. I'm using like a craft stock. Um, you could use whatever you wanted to. If you had a 12 by 12, you could trim it down. Now she showed cutting it down to eight by 11, but I left mine. If you did cut it down to the size that she did, it would be this size here. Um, and this is another one that I had made. I'm not too happy with it. I don't know if it's this bow throwing me off or what, but this is how this, this one had came out. But I still think it's really adorable, but something's throwing me off with it. But I'm like, maybe I should have done some of this heel size or something. But anyways, so you can see a little bit because of that half inch. So that's how she had said eight, eight by 11 in her video, but I just did it by the eight and a half by 11. And it was actually an accident. I had forgot to trim that piece. All right, so for the very first step, what you're going to do is you're gonna turn it this way. So where it's by the eight and a half, okay? So the very first score that you're gonna do, and I will have all this information down below. The very first score that you're gonna do is at two inches. So you're gonna come all the way down, all right? And then we're gonna turn it back to the long way here. And we're gonna go to two inches. So we're gonna go to two, and then we're going to go to five and a quarter. All right, and then we're gonna go to seven and a quarter. And then we're gonna go to 10 and a half. All right, so we're gonna go to 10 and a half, just like that. All right, so this is what you're gonna do. So in her video, she had talked about taking your thumb around here, around the five inch mark, just so you can make the score line and stop right here, because you need to stop. This is what I did. I took a piece of scrap paper. It doesn't even have to be a scrap, it could just be a piece of paper. All right, so I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna put it at that five inch mark. All right, make sure that stays lined up. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that it's at this five inch mark so it can go all the way down, just like that, all right? So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come at the one inch and you're gonna score down and stop at that five inch. And then you're gonna come on down to six, let's see, six and a quarter right here and you're gonna do the same thing and you're gonna stop right there, okay? So you don't go any for further. Then the next thing that you're gonna wanna do and go in from this corner to this corner. Maybe hard to see with these lines like this, but she would go from where this score line was to this one and draw your lines, okay? That way it would go ahead and give you these crease marks that would be right here. So what we're gonna do next is, I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way because we're done with it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take and fold this on the score lines. We'll start with that long one. All right, so we're gonna fold that one, and then we're gonna come back to 
from this side here. And the possibilities are endless, because like I said, I took this size box and created this size. I just, you know, did the dimensions, and I'll be doing a video on that very soon, so. Um, but like I said, I do want to purchase the Long Fawn because it has that super cute scallop, which you could take a pair of scissors and kind of do. And then she has the handle, maybe if you had a punch. But I just love their dies. They're so smooth, and um, and I'm pretty pumped with them. I mean, I, I like, you know, I love my Cricut and my Silhouettes, but when it comes to dies, and this is any brand, um, you know, it just, I don't know, they seem so much crisper. Um than than the machines and i don't know this is me like here recently i've kind of got a thing going on for dyes so you may be seeing me in my videos using quite uh some dyes quite often because i'm really enjoying the the, the look of the dyes they're just so smooth um so i'm just gonna go ahead and and that doesn't mean that i don't use my won't be using my machines or anything because i mean you got so many more options but when it comes to certain things like these circles with the stitches they're just so beautiful okay so now once you have it like this so the one with the uh the real small side right here you're gonna take and just barely get a piece of that corner off just kind of get that edge off just like that okay and then you're gonna come down here to this flap and you're gonna tr go ahead and trim this one hopefully you guys can see these marks you're gonna trim just like that all right so this whole piece let me get it down here so y'all can see this whole piece you cut out so then for our next thing that I'm going to do is where all these score lines are down here at the bottom, we're going to come all the way up and cut each one of those. Just like that. So each one of these is now cut. The next step that I did was I took my die of my, um, the quilted pattern, right? I ran it through my machine. Then I took that piece and I ran it through my Zyron sticker maker that you've seen that I ran, I got through that Hobby Lobby haul. I ran it through there and that way it has the adhesive on the back. And then I just trimmed these down to size, okay? So I trimmed them down. I've already pulled the plastic off these so they'll be ready to go. But I trimmed these down so that way, because I wanted them further down. I've tore this one a little bit when I was pulling the sticker off, but it's okay because we're gonna cover it. Um, I trimmed them down because I wanted this spot more open for my bow and stuff up here. So that's what I did there. But you could do whatever you wanted to do. So this is the exact size of that die. You could take, especially if you didn't if you didn't do the eight and a half by 11, it would cover just like this. You just trim a little bit off the sides. So now if you did this, you could come up as far as you wanted to and then just trim here. But like I said, I just trimmed my, so now what I'm gonna do, like I said, I've already peeled off the front. And what I had planned on doing was, I was hoping that my original intention was I was hoping that I could savor all those little pieces still in here and run it through there so that it would stay. But some crazy reason when I ran it through, it, uh, and I'd already played with it before, it didn't do this. It, when I pulled it up, every little thing came out of the holes. Didn't even have to fuss with it. And I was like, no, but it's all right. It still came out really cute. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just line this up just like this, getting it closer down here to the bottom. And then what I did was I just took my bone folder there. So it already has the adhesive. So I just love running this through that. So that's one thing that I'm gonna be using, like I said, for my cards when I talked about that. All right, so I'm peeling that off the back. So now what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna make sure where I messed up, I'm gonna have down here, cause I'm gonna have heel sides covering it. So like I said, it's no big deal. So I'm gonna try to line this up, making sure I'm getting it as even as the other side. All right, so I'm gonna lay it down just like that. Take my bone folder and get that laid down. All right, so now that I've got those on there, um, what I did was I started to put this together. So I'm gonna flip this over now, this, actually no, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add on this smaller piece right here where we cut out this little piece here. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna take my Tombow little runner here because now I've been obsessed with this guy, y'all know that. All right, so I'm gonna take that and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fold it over just like this and this side will perfectly just fold right over that. All right, so you're gonna just kinda get that in there just like that, all right? And you see our box just kinda takes form. So now for the bottom, what I did was I folded so I took and I just folded it like this, right? I took my Tombow and ran it down like that, flipped it over. And these are on those shorter little pieces. Okay, just like that. 
So then I took and popped those inside. Pop those inside just like that. All right, get that side down. And then what I did was came back and then laid this down. And then took my bone folder and kind of got that. You could also take your bone folder and stick it down inside your bag and just kind of get down there and rub it around, all right? Because I like to make sure that adhesive is on there really well. All right, so, so far there's our bag. So you can see what I was talking about with those little lines that just kind of helps form those little creases right there. So there's that. So this is gonna be my front because I wanna cover this up, which is driving me crazy. I imagine some of you guys too. All right, so what we're gonna do is I've already pre-cut out my little um, heel sides here. So they're gonna perfectly, and I've already cut them down. So when I cut my heel sides out of the paper, I cut them down, I believe to be a three and a, three and a quarter, so that way they would just fit right on here just like this. So I have those lined up where, they, where I want them to be, and this is what I did. I carefully held it down just like this, lifted this one up, put a little bit here on the corner, move that back over, laid that down, so that way I can move this out of the way and come back and add my adhesive. But do whatever's the easiest for you. I mean, that's just what I do. I cut corners with stuff like that. All right, so now I can flip this over and I can add my adhesive on the back. So that way I know those are setting exactly where I want them to be. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just rub that down. I can take my bone folder again and just kind of make sure that's worked in there. All right, okay, so I didn't do anything with my stitching until the end. So what I did next was this time, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and take a bigger circle. I just wanted to test it out. So this is just for video purposes here and see what we thought. So I'm going to try it just so we can see. So you can see the two different sizes here. I want to try the bigger one. It would have been cool to also take this and have it back behind. So if I took the smaller one, I thought about that. So you take it and tuck it back behind here and then have the horse because I can make that look like a little sunrise. So let's go ahead and actually try that. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in with Hero Arts uh, Butter Bar because we're gonna make that look like a sun. So let me go ahead and get that inked up. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and dip right into this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this little guy right behind here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of my Tombow adhesive on the back here. But I just love these dies, aren't they so cute? All right, so I'm gonna get that laid down right there and then we'll figure out our little horse. I can get him kind of set right here. So I think he'll be cute right, well, maybe right about there is what we'll do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop a couple of these down. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my little pony down. I'm gonna put it right about there, all right? So what I did was I just flipped my bag upside down, stuck my hand in there, and pushed her down. All right, I was also gonna tell you guys that I did also purchase the glow-in-the-dark glow embossing powder, so we're gonna use that very soon. That also would have been cool to get the sun with that, and I didn't think about it before I put it down. And then I did get the Lawn Fawn glue tube, and I love it, that's what I used to, um, I had put these little pieces on here. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is what I did for this part. All right, so I took my We Are Memory Keepers little mat here and the little punch tool here. You could use your crocodile for this, but like I said before, I don't have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just push down. And what I did was took my ruler. So let me actually turn this, all right. So I took my ruler and then just kind of even this up here. And so I know I wanna punch at four and five and then just came down a little ways about a little over a half inch came and pushed down trying to make those as even as possible just like that so i don't have to worry about it going all the way through because then the next step thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take just a regular hole punch it costs like 99 cents at walmart i'm going to punch it like i said if you have a crocodile you could do the same thing all right so take your hole punch so that way now i have my holes for my ribbon so now i'm going to go ahead and take my um the glue from Lawn Fawn, their little glue tube. And we're gonna just kind of get a little bit all the way around. I squeezed that a little bit too hard there the first time. All right, get a little bit of that glue around there. 
And then where I cut out the little um, pieces here with my tag die, I'm just gonna pop those on. Just like that. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna get the other two. All right, so just like that, I'm gonna kinda push down on those, make sure they're gonna stay. Now I'm not worried about that glue because it's gonna dry clear. Okay, so let's go ahead and so the next thing that we're gonna do, I need to, um, cause I'm gonna layer these on top of each other like this. So I need to ink this up with the gray. So I took my black soot distressed oxide, so I just took a little bit of that and then just came in just like this all the way around. Okay, so just like that, that's what I did for that. All right, and then um, I came back with my misty tool here all right so we're going to get this laid on here just like this and go ahead and get that happy birthday sentiment and like i said i cut mine in half so that way i could layer them on top of each other because it was too long for this tag all right so something that's just like that so I'm gonna come down, pick that up. All right, I'm gonna take my Memento Tuxedo. I'm gonna ink that up, lay it down. Go over it one more time. Just like that. I'm gonna take my little um, Lawn Fawn stamp cleaner, get that cleaned up. And I am not sponsored by Lawn Fun in any way, shape, or form. I purchased these by myself. I just wanted to share what I got going on. Okay, so now we're ready with that. So then what I'm going to do, um, at this point, you could come in and get all your stitch lines going. I'm going to go ahead and take my white gel pen here. And then I'm just going to come all the way around. Now this ain't gonna show up very well because of the, um, the gray, but you will lightly be able to see this. So I go ahead and lay it down anyways. So I'm just getting on some quick stitch lines there. But you can do this afterwards, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's go ahead and get the ribbon. So I'm using this, this is from Hobby Lobby and it is $1.99. Most times you can get it um, half off, so it'd be a buck. So we're gonna take our ribbon and then we're gonna take our red twine here. And then I also used um, some juke twine. So we're gonna take some juke twine as well. And what I did was I layered them all three together just like this. All right, and I started on this hole because I wanted it to come through this one last so I could put that in there. So I'm gonna, I have them all three layered and I just poke it through the hole just like this and then reach back and grab it just like this. And then I'm just gonna keep going here. Each time I just kind of realign them to make sure they're all together. And this is a pretty big hole to, uh, to be able to pull these all through. All right, so once I get them all the way through, kind of maybe have to yank on them one at a time there, kind of figure out my length so I can go ahead and trim these off. All right, so just like that. 
So then the next thing that I did was I took my tags here. I'm gonna line them up together like this. And we're gonna kind of roll these together so I can stick it through that hole. Just like that. I'm gonna pull that all the way down, kind of pull those apart like that. And then I'm gonna kind of push this down. I'm gonna get this tied like that. And then I'm gonna come back and get my bow. All right, so just like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with my scissors and trim off these this excess here, just like that. So there it is. So now you could either leave it like this, because I think it looks really cute just like that as well, or you could come back and stitch, um, and I'm not gonna do that on camera to kind of save a little bit of time. You could come back and go all, I went all the way around the bag and stitched, and we came back on the, um, the quilt piece and we stitched it, and then we went around the grass as well. So you could leave it either way. Zoom you guys in just a little bit more so you guys can see. So there it is, it's super cute. So you have the front and the back like that. You could always just leave the back with just the uh, craft card stock. I think that would be super adorable as well. I think it'd actually way cuter without it and just have the front then. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.